Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday, I hope you're having fun. Um, made a few changes here, so sorry for the delays and thank you for joining in this wonderful grand experiment of mine, Sketch Day Live. We are coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah, in my mountain bunker compound thing, whatever you wanna call it. And we are having fun as always, sketching and joining. Thanks for being here. Thanks for checking in. Uh, let me know where you're calling from. Good to see you, Jordan, AKA Ninja. Welcome back. Um, just to kick things off, we're gonna start by warming up. At any point, feel free to ask me questions. Ah, sorry, just reaching for some stuff here. Feel free to ask me questions. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna chat and sketch. Totally cool, totally good. Um, just gonna warm up here. So I was just grabbing some junk paper so I could do the usual. Hope you had a good day. I have been going nonstop since I woke up, so I might be a little frazzled. Um, I'm gonna start with a sketch that I've been wanting to do. What's up, Alex Design? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. That's uh, if you've seen a Lego movie, that's from, from that movie. Um, I just grabbed a random pen because I just wanna warm up here. So another way to warm up, just so you guys know, is you can put dots on the paper and you can uh, draw between those dots, like so, nice straight line. That's another way to work on your accuracy, if that's something you're trying to do. Draw with your elbow and your shoulder. I do not have the over shoulder camera today though, however, so my apologies on that. I am literally sitting in a mess of construction in my studio right now. I'm trying to mount some fixed points to the ceilings and the walls where I'm gonna be mounting my cameras and some other lights that I will use as kind of backup lights, auxiliary things. So making a few upgrades and as always, just trying to be better, a little bit better every day. What's up Kyle from Austin? Oh, hey, I spoke to Kyle today, what's up? Lynette, thanks for checking in. Hello, Alex is checking in from Montreal. Or how do you, how do you say that in French, Montreal? I don't know, um, <laughs> I don't speak French obviously. So a couple lines, I, I much prefer doing them without the start and stop points, but that's just me. Maybe I do need to work on my accuracy, so I should do that, perhaps a little bit more. Hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy. It's been interesting watching as we have been in this somewhat disconnected state of self-isolation, quarantine, sequester, whatever you want to call it, and um, just being able to connect with people, thats that's been interesting. I feel closer to some people because of it, which is interesting. I'm, I'm actually an introvert. I don't know if you guys knew that. And so, what's up, Hector? Um, I actually enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the time away from people sometimes, so that's just my flow right now. That's, that's me. So warming up, Hector Silva has joined us. He is a super awesome professional industrial designer. I told him about the stream and I shamed him because he hasn't been watching. So he's joining us today. He actually uh, is an instructor at a college teaching industrial design. So I gotta keep my A game up today. Now that Hector's here. No fooling around, guys. All right, as always, I wanna hear what your suggestions are, ideas, thoughts, feelings, all that good stuff. Drop them in the chat, and I would love to incorporate some of those. Montreal, Hector, Montreal. Uh, Mike, what's up? Hello, hello, you're drawing. I am drawing too. Oh, good, awesome, thanks for drawing with me. All right, now onto the circles. If you've seen this part before, that's okay. I literally do this every day, if you're wondering how to get good as an illustrator, designer, drawer, whatever, gain control over things. You definitely want to warm up, do your practice exercises as much as you can. Definitely don't waste paper, so I like to overlap, do different sizes, all that good thing. You could even practice doing things like concentric or, as I like to do, ellipses in those circles that you drew. So a really good warm up. It's almost like taking an orange and just slicing it all the way through. Good practice, good reminder, and definitely connects the brain to my arms for me personally. So um, something you can practice and doesn't have to be perfect. 
no one said your practice has to be perfect, just that through practice you become more perfect, right? So make sure you guys are getting all of that good stuff in. So I'm going to kick things off today by drawing a vehicle. I have been wanting to draw, um, I don't know, like a fast car, but not, not your typical vehicle, maybe something along the lines of uh, Formula One or high performance racer. Maybe it's a, a drag streamlined vehicle. Um, feeling inspired by the illustrator designer. Um, I think his first name is John. I don't, I don't uh, recognize a lot of people online by their real names. It's funny. Like uh, Hector goes by Hectorius. <laughs> so sometimes I'm tempted to just be like, oh, Hectorius. But this guy, John Fry, he's super talented. He works uh, out in California. I won't say where. Um, but it's just super talented illustrator, definitely inspired by, like, at least I feel, Sid Mead, Art Center style, all that stuff. Um, and I'm not going to do one of his drawings per se, I'm just saying the topic is inspired by him. So shout out to John. I don't think he's watching, but shout out. All right. Let's see, checking in on the chat, the cat guy, what's up? What made me want to become an industrial designer? That's a good question. So I'll talk about that as I draw my concept here. Um, but essentially what I'm going to try and draw is a, I think it's something like this. So let's just put two circles, wheels down, maybe the ground. And I want to do something kind of with this like profile almost. And I don't know if it's going to be a closed cab or gonna be some sort of extended cap I don't know yet maybe it's a little bit Batmobile-ish but I've just had this image in my head all day and I want to do something with it so that's what we're gonna do and maybe it'll have like some huge foil on the back I don't know but we're just gonna have fun and draw something like that always helpful as you're planning out a design to kind of work on other views so in this case I can't fit the entire <clears throat> top view here but at least I can map out okay you know this is a wheel and I have this wheel flare going over the wheel but maybe there's some aerodynamic stuff happening with this design okay so as we move to the back and you can imagine this being the central cab portion here maybe something on the hood we'll figure that out later as we rough this out um, but to answer the CAD guys question I I was actually a math major before I became an industrial designer and I love math. I, I was like well on my way studying calculus and linear algebra, differential equations, all of that good stuff. And finally, when the numbers started disappearing, I realized maybe this isn't for me. <laughs> so I had a friend at the time and he was studying this thing called industrial design and I thought that's kind of interesting. I wonder tell me more about it so he did and I realized oh I can I can draw I can make models I can make products that sounds really awesome I get to use and pardon me if this sounds very simplistic but I was like I can I can use computers which I loved using computers I was uh, studying computer science as well with the math so I was like yo this is cool what if I come what if I did this and combined everything so I went into the major and quickly realized I needed to work super hard because I was not good. Um, on an earlier live stream, a few months ago I think, I showed some of my early sketches. Maybe I'll do it again sometime so you guys can see that practice definitely makes a difference. As you're drawing, as you're, well drawing or anything really, um, the more you do it and the more, the more successful you are at that thing, you become better. So that's certainly um, something to be aware of if you are practicing, just trying to be better and improve those skills is practice absolutely makes you better. All right, so hopefully that answers your question. Feel free to drop any more as they come. I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading with my chart packs here. Let's go ahead and just use the cool grain. Can't say enough about you fans and your contributions. Thank you so much for the markers. Hopefully Chad's not getting sick of me saying that, but um, I really do appreciate it. So it means a lot um, that you guys are here. I know everyone's busy. We have lives to live. So 
appreciate the time and interest and your passion, frankly, because without your passion, none of this would really be possible. So this gray marker here is just a quick way if I'm working on a thumbnail sketch or anything like that, um, kind of helps me establish some three dimensionality in the uh, drawing so that when I do go to do the bigger drawing, I kind of um, have a guide, so to speak, about what I'm going to do. So as always, these sketches will be scanned and available on the Google Drive link. If you missed that before, I will paste that link here in just a sec. I was not prepared for this part. We're getting better though. At least I'm not 15 minutes late today. So um, appreciate you guys being here. But this folder, for those who are in the chat right now, if you click on this folder link that I'm pasting, boom you will have access to pretty much all the sketches I have done on the, the live streams up until, or yeah, going way back. So, and those are all 300 DPI at least scanned or photos that I've taken of the larger pieces as well. All right, so let's get started. I'm using a Pentel sign pen. Um, it's similar to a paper made flare, but the tip's a little bit bigger. So um, it's almost like using a Sharpie, but it is a water-based. Pen. Yeah, it does kind of look like a Batmobile, but that's okay. We'll roll with it. So what I'm gonna do here, you've probably seen this before as well. Just kind of start with some side of some sort of perspective box that is representative of the design intent. Now, with something like this, I am working on a very big piece of paper. Hopefully, you guys can see this, this is actually 14 inches tall this way 14 inches is about let's see 14 times 25 28 times a half it's about 35 centimeters this way and then 17 inches this way 35 plus 75 centimeters or 75 millimeters so you're about 42 and a half uh, centimeters by 35 just to give you guys a point of view and reference so drawing big is one of those things that um, I think is kind of a lost art no pun intended, but a lot of people don't draw big anymore. And, you know, I get it. It's okay. Um, a lot of us have digital packages, programs, tools, aids, all that good stuff to help us draw. But when you draw big, it forces you to work with your shoulder and your elbow as you're drawing. So that's one reason I like it. And also, one thing I haven't really talked about on the channel, but your... Um, seating position can also impact how you view your work and kind of distort things. So you'll want to watch out for that. The best position is actually standing when you draw. So maybe I'll do a video on that one. Um, I'll make a note of that on the paper here. Stand and draw. All right. Okay, so looking at this, um, all I'm gonna do really, I'm not trying to create a perfect, accurate reproduction of this side sketch, but just trying to pick up some, shall we say, proportional notes. So it looks like I kind of have some inflection points at thirds in this design. Let's ignore the overhang here for now. And the cabin appears to be about halfway. So let's start with the cabin portion. Lynette says she bought paper made flares the other day. Nice, how do you like them? How are those treating you? Do tell me. Um, this stream will be recorded by the way, or it is recorded, um, and it will be available on YouTube, but I'm also uploading them to Facebook. So what I did here is by connecting the corners of this large box, at this intersection point, I now have halfway on this box. And you'll notice because it is in perspective that this portion closest to us appears to be uh, wider than the portion that's further away. And that's just how perspective works. All right, so I've got this design and now I need to figure out thirds. How do I figure out thirds? Well, I'm just gonna guesstimate it, honestly. Um, so here I know, I'm gonna say this is about, let's see, now nah, it's still not accurate, but I'm gonna go about here and say, this is about a third of the way in, okay? So at these thirds, I know I have these inflection points like so. Let's go ahead and map out the wheel as well. You could further divide and say, oh, this is about a fourth of the way in. So we can divide this other box like so. And now I have half of this main box. 
All right, so quarter, this is about a third, a little bit more than a quarter, so I'm okay with that. Thumbs up, pat yourself on the back, all that good stuff if you're following along. Um, and once again, that link, the Google Drive link, you can join the Discord. The point in joining Discord is that you can post your sketches and share those. I'll give you a sneak peek here. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right. So this is the Discord. And as you can see, there's a bunch of us hanging out in there. Um, sketches being posted, all that good stuff. So if you do want to show your work and share stuff, you can do it there. Hector dropped a sketch. Um, I do post the live stream stuff in there as well. So you'll want to check that out. All right. <clears throat> and I'll be checking that throughout the stream as well, just to make sure that if you are communicating that way, I can see what you're trying to point out. All right. So back to this, about a third of the way in, we've got our first wheel and I need a square. So I'm just going to estimate roughly what this square might look like. So this is going to be my first wheel right there. All right. Now the other wheel seems to be about a quarter of the way in from the end. So once again, I'm going to divide this line and kind of guesstimate here. And now I have two squares. Now, some of you may have seen this. It's okay. I'm just going to hit it and hammer it home once again. But if I have a circle in a square, I can observe some things about the relationship. For example, tangency at these four points. And then from corners A, B, C, and D, if I draw an X like that, and a plus like that. I now have divided this into eight parts. And with these eight parts, I can observe, you know, open your eyes, pay attention, see if you can pick up on relationships. This is roughly a third of the way in. Okay. It's not exactly a third. It's actually a little bit more, but um, it's a good guide. So what I would do in perspective here now is divide this box up front, like so into eight parts, same thing in the back, like so. This can get a little bit messy, but I do want to show you the mechanics of putting together a sketch. And sometimes, honestly, I, this is what I do. If I know I'm going into something that is a bit more complex, I will map things out. Now, what I'm doing here is projecting to the other side so I can figure out where the other square is, do the same thing. And what I want to do now is look at my example at the top, pick up on these relationships and see if I can map them out on my main drawing. So I'm going to grab a blue and a green marker just so that the colors can show up a bit on the video here of all of this construction stuff because I'm actually going to do an overlay of this sketch. Okay. Lynette says, they've been great so far. I like how many line weights you can get with them. Just the one pen, whereas before I'd use five different pens. That's true. That's what I like about the Paper Made Flares or even the Pentel Sign Pen. And there's a bunch of pens kind of in that family of... Uh, tools that you can use that have a similar um, usage and feel. All right, so these points I'm going to mark again roughly a third of the way in. Just identify those tangent points and once I connect all these I'll have an ellipse. Hello Alexander from Portugal with love. Thank you. Too kind. But once I connect these points, I now have an ellipse constructed. Now, again, I don't typically do this in my drawings or sketches because it is somewhat time consuming, but it's good to understand the mechanics of what you're doing. Um, if you're doing something complex, just kind of having an idea of where everything is, is super helpful. Now I've got these wheel flares and they seem to go above the wheels at certain heights. So in the back, I'm just going to block this out in the back. Sometimes I find it helpful to just think in raw geometry, geometry meaning the shape of things. So projecting up, for example, here, and just even having these lines as reference so that when I do the front of this vehicle, um, I do have it curved. So I'm going to go ahead and from this midpoint, stick out a little bit and just throw a curved line here on the front. Okay, just like that. And let's go ahead and make this line on the bottom a little heavier because I really want this car to feel like it is just super low to the ground. Okay. Um, offset that ellipse. And now I have some thickness for a wheel, for example. And like I said, we have kind of a little bit of thickness here in the front. And then I know I have a sweep. Okay. So this sweep, I'm just kind of estimating based on 
these two points, the arc between those points. Now there are ways to take your orthographic drawing. We could create multiple slices and planes and figure everything out, but that gets tremendously messy. So I like to kind of just have some touch points, if you will, that I can use. Now about a half of the, half of the way in here, we have a return down like so. Again, just putting some fixed points in place up. I know I'm going to wrap over this wheel in the back like so. And let's see, let me get a center line on the hood here because I want to bring this back as well to the back of the drawing. And you can always check that by just projecting your lines all the way over to where there's an intersection up and so forth. All right, so I'm going to bring that down back over like so. And now I've got, you know, basically this area on the drawing I want to focus on and try and figure out some of what's happening. I've got some crazy lines. Um, here that maybe I didn't represent in the top view. So I've really got to figure out what's happening in the main sketch. So, but this is enough to kind of um, start for now, as well as I have to pay attention to the top view and some of these distances. So the cab, for example, I know um, kind of goes in a little bit. So let's say this is the width. This plane here is the width of the cab. I'm going to have a little bit of a sweep going back and I can sweep the other side. And I'm just going to sweep to this point just to give myself a sense of um, size and scale. I also have this middle point here. So if I know the cab in my overhead sketch is about halfway, I'm going to take this halfway point that we found, go up and over like so. And now I have a sweep for this cab. Let's keep it simple. Keep it nice and easy. And so now we have the in between here to deal with. Okay. And I'm just going to throw two lines in. We'll go ahead and massage this as we do our main sketch. But I'll throw these two lines in just as a plane um, for this cab. And the cab has some height. So again, just, just kind of working in block fashion almost Okay, as we do this. Because the overlay sketch, I can change and I can make it however I want. In fact, looking at this sketch, I have more of a slanted cab. So I can either you know, to cheat a little bit, bring that forward, or go ahead and scale back. So. I'm going to do a little bit of both and in the final sketch I'll fudge it and make it work so don't worry worry too much guys all right so here I've got this wheel flare and now I have this line on my side view I'm, I'm kind of paying attention and trying to make sure that I I mimic this line right here okay I'm not quite sure what or how um, this works just yet but I'm gonna just throw up a line kind of like this just a general guide I also have the foil kind of sketched in on the top here and this foil on this car I actually have running to the ground kind of just a big obnoxious thing okay so I want to make sure I, I capture just the size and scale of this foil now if I'm trying to make sure that I'm consistent across the drawing sketch a line across over over continue in perspective and that's going to roughly give you kind of a start point for the foil on the other side of the vehicle, okay? And then maybe there's a, a centerpiece connecting these two for stability and whatnot. But I definitely will work on the cab here um, because I do have also another line, as you can see, on the side view that kind of comes down toward the center of the wheel well, and that's why I put that there, okay? But we'll figure out what this mess means when we do our overlay sketch. So once again, happy Thursday. I mean, Wednesday, not Thursday. Happy Wednesday. It's been a week, man. Um, hopefully you guys are staying safe, having fun, and learning. I think this is a great opportunity for learning. And don't worry, I'm not going to pitch you on any uh, sales or courses or anything like that. But um, it's a good opportunity for some calm for everyone to just kind of uh, find themselves again, so to speak and highly encourage you guys to take some time to just breathe, take in the air, your environment, and so forth. All right, I may change those lights because they look kind of dumb to me right now. All right, but I do have my wheel in place. Let's say this is a wheel well, like so. We'll keep it low to the ground, like I said. And we're gonna finish this one with markers and all that good stuff, so hang tight. But this is, my, this is now my underlay sketch. And a lot of times, um, you know, I may sketch in a more rigid perspective 
and then I like to rotate the page ever so slightly just to get it the right way that I want it. Um, in this case, I don't really have a ton of space because I used all the page up. So now let's go ahead and put this under my giant marker sheet here. I think I lost the cap to my marker, unfortunately. And I really don't want it to dry out, so give me just a sec here. All right, found it. So now, like I said, I'm gonna switch to pencil and I'm using Prismacolor pencils. Uh, no rulers, no tools, nothing like that. And so at this point, um, normally I would do another sketch before the final sketch, but I'm gonna try and make this work for you guys because I love you and thanks for being here. And I wanna have some time to do a sketch that you guys want me to do. So definitely drop some script, sub, not, ah, drop suggestions in the chat and we'll make it happen. All right, you're welcome, Pedro, you're welcome. Um, always fun. I want this one to be good though, and there's a fingerprint here. Uh, it's close enough to the light though. I can probably make it work. All right, keeping your drawings clean is just so hard sometimes. Um, I don't know if you guys experience this at all. All right, so once again, just using some marker paper, and what I try to do at this point is not, uh, not trace my drawing, but just resketch. Okay, so that just means all the lines I'm putting down now are fresh to death. Okay, actually, I like I like the straight side. I'm gonna keep this line straight, just super straight, just all the way down. This thing's like freaking low to the ground, right? Aerodynamic. I did move that wheel a little bit. Hopefully, it works out. We'll see. <laughs> okay. And then just a nice light line for this wheel flare. And this wheel flare, maybe this actually comes in a bit. So I could have this line go like so, and then on the side have a line like so, where these two meet up. And now I kind of have to come up and meet the hood somewhere. So it gives me an opportunity to now integrate some of these lines a little bit better. And I guess it does kind of look like the Batmobile. So. Maybe it's, what if the Batmobile were entered into a race car competition? What would that look like? I'm okay with that. All right, so just sketching some main lines here. And as I lift the paper, hopefully you can see what I'm trying to do is just pull the relevant details out of that main sketch, all right? Keep it fresh. Keep it clean, so fresh and so clean. <laughs> All right. Get our center line in here. There's something, there's something uh, that I like about pure geometry sometimes when it comes to design or um, illustration. There's just something really cool about the restraint of having very simple elements on a sketch or a design that I I certainly appreciate and enjoy. All right, this is this is kind of a one one human vehicle experience. So the cab is super tight. Got our wheel flare here, and maybe this just rolls nicely into the side, right? A little bit of an overhang here, connect just like that. And then maybe this runs into, you know, where this uh, foil is. I can imagine maybe there's some sort of stabilization or connection piece. So I'm just trying to work out these details as I go. Andres says he'd like to see an asthma inhaler. I did a drone last time, so I'm not gonna do a drone. Um, a plane, I could do a plane or some sort of aircraft for sure. Totally possible. So I'll take note of those. Thank you so much for the suggestions. Okay, so my car in the side view had kind of an extended back here. So I wanna capture a bit of that. And then let's get back to this foil, this huge ginormal foil that I had going on. I 
just like this nice and light always work light until you get it right but you want to be confident as well so even though I'm working light these strokes I'm trying to keep them very uh, very deliberate thoughtful purposeful but not overworked not hes not hesitant because all of that stuff comes through in your drawings at least I think it does you know if I can look at a sketch and you can almost think about the artist or illustrator's frame of mind depending on how it is executed so I do believe that your personality uh, frame of mind attitude all of that stuff definitely ends up in your sketches so clear your mind relax have fun it's all good <clears throat> sorry I've been talking so much today I had a, a few phone calls I think I'm I think my voice is a little bit exhausted but it's all good maybe there's some exposed engine stuff back here actually I like I like the idea of that so I'm just working on this little area that goes back <clears throat> like so and wherever there's glass I like to kind of sketch through a little bit as well so you can kind of see see what's happening now I can kind of remove a bit of that and you can see now I have the sketch sorry about the light um, it's it's definitely a challenge um, something that <laughs> I'm trying to figure out still but it's getting better for sure all right I'm just gonna throw a couple lines down kind of finish this thing out keep it clean I'm actually gonna open this wheel well on the front and just simplify it a bit more but like I said a lot of times I like to um, I like to do this. This would be my intermediate sketch because I'm still trying to figure out some details. Right? But definitely keep it light till you get it right, till you're ready to commit to your drawing. All right, a couple little highlight things part lines all that good stuff of course this is not a real product so I can do whatever I want just the beauty of doing something like this all right so now I want to do some headlights and hopefully you guys can see the pencil sketch this is the underlay right so underlay kind of some initial thoughts just really rough and then going into this more final drawing All right, and so I'm just gonna start sketching in a few technical elements here on this vehicle. All right, and I do need lights and I haven't decided on the light design. One of the cool things I can do though is, let me grab a scrap piece of marker paper or even tracing paper. And much like you would do with a digital drawing package, you can grab your piece of tracing paper. Now I can see the sketch underneath and I can play with design elements. So if I'm not quite sure what I want the lights to look like, like maybe I have some design that's like this, for example, I could play with that, see what I like. All right, just be like, oh, okay. What if, what if the light had this inter intersection thing, and this line of the vehicle kind of carried that all, right? Could be kind of cool. So that's that's one way to do it. Um, and then, or I could just come in and say, okay, maybe maybe I just want to do some some more traditional light shapes. something like this 
and you go, what does that look like? And how does that impact the corner of the car? Like maybe this needs to round a little bit more. Um, but that's one way to do it is just take your tracing paper, kind of sketch a little bit, see what you think, and then go from there, All right? So what do you guys think? What light shape should I use? I mean, maybe there is no light, maybe it's just a cutout. And it's like those old 80s style uh, vehicles where there's just a cutout and the lights would pop up, right? So you could have something like this where these lights pop up. Which I kind of like actually. <laughs> I haven't seen this in forever. We need to bring back some cool stuff. Now that the world is ending, you know, just kidding, it's not ending. But uh, now that we're now that we're coming up on a reset, maybe we should bring back some of this old stuff. Okay, Alex likes the second one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a look, it's a good look. I like the idea of doing these headlights though. So I think I'm gonna go with something like that. And since I already have it on tracing paper, I'm just gonna fold this and put it underneath my sketch here. Kind of get these corners out of the way. I mean, this is this is like Photoshop by hand, <laughs> right? I made a new layer and I put this one on top. So that's what this is right here. Boom. All right. I kind of want to do like a, a ground foil almost. And I can cover this up with a shadow if I don't like it, so. But maybe there is some sort of ground foil that's happening. Got this little detail here on the side. Like so. Yes, pop up headlights. Hello, Dimitri Papadopoulos. I think I said your name right. Um, from Greece. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. What time is it there in Greece? I picked this time because I figured. You know, it was late on the East Coast, but it's early elsewhere in the world. So I am curious, and I think we're going to get some people maybe from India, uh, maybe from China. We'll see, but it's a good time. All right, so now let's do our pop-up lights here. Rounded edge, just like that, boom. I'm gonna sweep this line across the front, just super light. Two lines down, and now go back like so. And I've got my pop-up lights. Cool. So that's that's one way you can work through um, design details, if you will. Now, if I wanted to add something like you know some air intake or whatever on the front, you could do that. Um, as well. Let's see. I'm going to do let me make sure these lights at least have some thought as to what they are. Maybe there's a primary, secondary, something like that. Make sure we have our this is just a small detail, but I want to make sure the gap feels like a gap on these lights. And as far as the rims go, I'm going to go with something maybe a little futuristic kind of this half hub design on my rim or wheel all right and again i just want this thing to feel super close to the ground you know just like that now as far as colors which is kind of where i'm at mentally and thinking about you know maybe this kind of body line here could could function as some sort of color break so you could imagine um right where the wheel flare ends Okay, just like that. I'm gonna have all of this one color on this little insert area here. In fact, let's go ahead and make this line a little crisper, like so. So this area could be a color. And again, we had that sweep on the body, right, on the cab. So maybe this is some sort of just shaded and really lightly but some sort of intake that goes off 
around where the driver would sit. Okay. Leo, welcome. It's good to see I'm doing YouTube. Thank you. I've been doing YouTube since I think October last year. Um, I don't know what's up. I've been trying to increase the vision of my channel and I don't know, but I'm not going to stop. Um, it's, it's something I love and I believe in doing this. So I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm totally open to ideas though. If you guys, um, have ideas about the channel or things you want to see. So definitely hit me up. I'm going to share with you as well. My other channel, if you guys have kids, I just started this one. Um, and so check it out. I'm drawing with my kids. Okay, whoa, whoa, let's go delete, delete. All right, boom. So that's a link to my other channel where I draw with my kids. So if you want to check that out, feel free. All right, keep the front nice and clean. It's looking good. What do you guys think? Maybe a little bit of the cockpit in here and the seat. Just a few lines. Just a few lines to kind of communicate that. On the top, I'm gonna go ahead and do just this cool intake here. Have that be a part of the body. And it's gonna sweep down just a little bit like that. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining Sketch A Day Live. We now do this three times a week, okay? So, if you miss Fridays at 9 a.m., it's okay. I'm going to do Wednesdays, probably around this time, every Wednesday, unless I'm going out or something. And then I'll do Sundays as well, if you're interested. Okay. Ah, time to decide what markers to use. I think I'm going to use my... I'll use the chart packs. <laughs> I'll still use those. They are super juicy. Let me dump them out here. All right, but I'm gonna use the basic grays. Those to me feel more like a cool gray than my cool gray markers do, which is weird. And then I'm gonna use the reds as well. And let's see, am I missing a basic gray? I might be missing one of my basic grays. Let's see, basic gray, two, three, no, I'm good. I'm so good. All right, like I said, feel free to drop questions, comments, whatever. Could be about life, anything you want, the universe. I don't really care. I'm just happy you guys are here. So thanks again for joining. So at this point with the marker, again, this is a flat surface, so I'm gonna try and keep it, the marker somewhat consistent on this surface here. I actually didn't intend to use the gray. <laughs> I was supposed to use a red on this part, but whatever, we'll roll with it. Maybe the foil can be red, and then this portion could be, oh, that would be actually pretty cool. All right, so as far as lighting a car goes, um, let me grab some scrap paper. Kind of talk a little bit about how I'm thinking through this. Is it a possibility to have a notification system more than Instagram stories, ask Andres. Yes, subscribe to my YouTube channel, <laughs> which apparently a lot of people don't, and definitely uh, turn on alerts. There's a little bell on YouTube that you can use so that you, wait, this is the front of the car. So there's a little bell you can use and that will give you alerts on your phone or email as well when I'm going live. Okay, so a couple of you I know have that on because you were hanging out in the stream just in time. Okay, so this is kind of the front view of the car as I see it. You know, we've got that big foil. Actually, the foil is the same width as the car. So we have that big foil, like so. we got the air intake, all that good stuff. So if, if, if I'm lighting this, what I'm kind of thinking is I'll use blue. So if the light's coming at an angle, okay, light's going to hit. And I, I intentionally angled the hood here because I want to show I'm going to hit this part of the hood with light, for example, this side of the vehicle, this side of the foil, right? And so forth. And so on this side, I'm going to have a secondary light. Okay. So second light 
and then I will use that to hit the other side of the vehicle, like so. And the second light is actually gonna hit the opposite side of the foil, for example, that the primary light would hit. And that's kind of how I think about the lighting um, as I'm doing something like this. So you might notice, and I, I won't do this with different colors actually, but um, in this case, starting for example, on this center line to then do some shading like so and I'm trying to shade consistent with the direction of the surface so that to the viewer it's not confusing what's happening okay so I have my primary light source here so I'm gonna keep this portion a bit lighter than the rest and on this flare just a little bit of shadow like so and maybe just a couple lines like so but definitely lighter in fact once this is dry I can hit it again like so same thing on this other wheel flare nice and light and I want there to be some contrast over the side so I can use the same cool gray one marker and just hit that blend down and now I have the contrast I need okay between these two surfaces especially if they're white or light gray something like that and this is all with the cool gray one if I wanted to push the contrast a little bit more which I may in a little bit um, I would use the cool gray 3 for example um, but I'm gonna use Copic markers for the wheels themselves now the inside here like I said I want it to be a red color of some sort so switching to my red marker and these chart pack markers are interesting because in one tip you can get a bunch of different line thicknesses so to speak so really handy I'm not having to flip through caps and guess which end I'm opening all right but just some nice red there. I'm leaving this intentionally open, the white area, because I want to give myself the ability to go dark or just leave it as a nice striking highlight. All right, something like that, okay. Hello, Nuke Gamer. Nuke Gamer, I'm gonna take a beverage break here. And uh, just want to say once again, thank you for joining us on Sketch Day Live. It is Wednesday, March 25th, and we are having fun. Appreciate the suggestions. We'll switch to your ideas and suggestions in just a sec. All right. I feel like I'm being too careful with this drawing, <laughs> but I don't want to, you know, severely mess it up. So that's kind of why I'm taking a little bit of time here to just kind of get a few what I would consider to be hard points in on my drawing all right it's so just like that for the air intake a little bit of red and then I did want the foils to be red as well so I'll go ahead and shade that in Thank you, Henry. Thank you. We we're just having fun. At least I am having fun. Hopefully you are <laughs> as well. And hopefully you guys are staying safe, man. I went grocery shopping today and I was wearing my one N95 mask. No, I am not hoarding. I was wearing my one mask and it just felt so weird, you know, to be like, I remember when SARS and mares were out and about and I think the bird flu as well and I would watch the news and I would see people in other countries wearing masks and I thought hmm that must be that must be interesting but really um, it's like here you know it's my life it's what we're doing so it's been it's been kind of crazy just seeing how much has changed so fast I'll stop talking about all of that but um, I'm sure it's on a lot of people's minds as well so totally get it but let's keep it positive 
All right, I know on the headlights I'm gonna have kind of a dark area in here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shade that in with this cool gray too. So I do commissions for people. Um, sometimes I'll do cars or shoes, FYI. <laughs> it's a thing I do. And this is kind of my process, which is why I said, yeah, it's in, in between this and um, the initial sketch. Normally I do one more sketch just to nail things and make sure that I kind of have what I want to have for the drawing before I commit to the marker. But I decided to just kind of go for it here with you guys. So. We're all friends anyways, and hopefully you don't laugh at me if it, you know, doesn't turn out good. <laughs> but I'm not too worried. Alright, so just doing doing the wheels, wheel well area on these. Some nice gray. Always work light till you get it right. Okay? Take your time, breathe, think about what you're doing, all that good stuff, and... When you're ready, commit to those colors or elements or whatever else it is you're working on. I think I'm gonna make the rest of this um, red here on the back, like this wing, like so. I'll go ahead and make this red. I'm trying to keep away from some of the edges because again, with marker, you can't, once the ink is there, it just it's it's not that it's impossible to fix, it's just a lot harder. So if you can save yourself the trouble, definitely um, leave white where you anticipate there being highlights, for example, or you're gonna come back in and do something else. And you can thank me later. Okay, so I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna experiment here a bit and hopefully it actually works. I'm gonna actually paint, not paint, shade. <laughs> the inside of the cab here in red and then I'm gonna go over it with gray or pencil because I just I like the idea that the red color is kinda of coming through the vehicle um, and maybe even my rim here on the front you could have this be red as well just to tie in some of these design elements a bit What type of car is this? I just made it up. So, I'm not sure. It's some sort of futuristic, aerodynamic, racing, or adventure, I don't know. It's something. I just felt like doing it because it's been stuck in my mind. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I did this or that. And I don't know if you guys ever get that happening where you just have something in your head and you just can't get it out. Kind of like an airworm, but it's almost like a brain worm. That's what this is. So if you're joining from Instagram, definitely hit subscribe on YouTube. Get a YouTube account, hit subscribe, and turn on alerts. Because I go live three times a week now. And if you don't have those on, chances are you will miss the stream and what I'm doing here. All right. Now, I'll probably bring some more red into the front so we kind of get an interplay happening. Um, the foil in the back here, I'm going to make this just a dull gray. When I do my commission pieces that are marker sketches, I am a little bit more careful than I'm being right now. Like, I'll wear gloves. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a process because the drawings, you know, they, they go for a reasonable amount of money and so I don't want to waste my time redoing something. Um, but, you know, some people like the idea of a, yeah, that's gonna work. Um, some people like the idea of an original hand-drawn thing, and so that's kind of where that work is coming from. So I do shoes, I do people's cars, homes, things like that. So if you know anyone looking for something, you let me know. Let's get the side here in gray. I know I have this void, but I'm going to switch to a darker red like this brick red for some of these shadowed areas. And so now I'm gonna start building up some value where I can. And it's interesting because it's actually red. It's a red color. Um, I know on the camera it looks orange, but that's why I provide the scans so you guys can see what I'm seeing 
and so you don't run off to your friends and you're like, oh man, Spencer can't draw, he's colorblind. Um, <laughs> because I want you to realize what this looks like, okay? Let's see, Restored Highly Favored is asking, when did I start drawing? Um, like, when did I get good at drawing or when did I start drawing? Because those are two different um, things or questions. I, I would say I wasn't any good at drawing till I was probably in my second year of college, thereabouts. Um, and that's when, I mean, people used to say when I was a freshman or even a kid, they're like, oh, you're really good at this, but I didn't necessarily believe it. Um, I was highly inspired by old school designers, people like Feng Zhu. I don't know if you know who that is. Um, he's a concept artist. Um, Sid Mead, uh, Ralph McQuarrie, uh, Doug Chang, who actually has an Instagram. He's one of the original designers for uh, Star Wars movies. But those guys were like OG good, meaning they were the ones who were using, you know, markers and paint and <laughs> pencils and pens and all that good stuff. So um, to answer your question, it really wasn't until I started kind of paying attention to um, what other designers were doing and trying to mimic or see what I could learn from their processes. And when I was learning, it was different because there wasn't anything like this. There wasn't anyone online sharing stuff for free like there were a few resources Noman workshop but they were crazy expensive and I was a poor college student I wasn't gonna be able to afford that so part of me doing all this is to kind of give back and just say thank you <laughs> to those guys but also make what wasn't accessible to me accessible to more people so that's that's why I do it um, but I also love doing it so there you go Good evening, Charlie. What's up? Where are you based? I mean, don't give us your address or anything because, you know, got to practice proper internet safety here. But what time is it there? Where are you? Where in the world is Charlie McGowan? Charlie was also another contributor to Sketch a Day. Helped me acquire some materials for videos. So thank you for your contribution, Charlie. And thank you to my Patreons. If you are joining this, I appreciate your contributions. You will be receiving, uh, shall we say, a <laughs> a good reward for um, support. I, I am working on some brushes, so I'm gonna be giving those to my Patreons. If you are a Patreon, you'll be receiving a free set of those brushes. And those brushes are for Procreate, so. It's just patreon.com slash sketch day if you're interested. And you do get a free sticker and a few other things. So appreciate the support, everyone. All right, so just continuing to build up contrast, make this work. I'll fill in the gray here in just a sec. Um, and the lights and all that good stuff. Uh, let's see, I should definitely try drying on the Rungi RS O ten O oh drawing the wrong yard uh, oh I have no yeah I have no idea what that is so I'll definitely have to look that up and see what you're talking about but yeah no idea so somewhat related to the question of when I started drawing honestly if you want to get really good at drawing. And there's, there's no two ways around it. You just have to draw every day. So kudos to you if you're already doing that. Ever since I quit my full-time job and I've started doing this, I've gotten so much better. Um, before I was just drawing on whiteboards all the time for people, which frankly gets kind of boring pretty quickly. And now that I'm doing this, yeah, I can definitely see some improvement and I'm enjoying it and I'm having a really good time. So if you want to get good, just draw every day. All right. Okay. Now I got to address this giant white spot here. Oh, it's Tuesday. It's, it's 2 a.m. on Thursday, 26 for Lynette. Okay. Well, I appreciate you hanging out and yeah, it'll be... 
posted on the YouTube and on Facebook. Facebook usually takes about an hour after the YouTube. So if that's your preference, you can check it out there. But I will have this stuff available for you because I love you. Thank you for joining, Lynette. Much appreciated. All right, I'm trying to get some lighting because the red looks kind of flat right now. Um, I'll also play with the gray a little bit here. Let's see. I'm not going to use this cool gray. Well, maybe I will. Let me test the color on this back page. All right, yeah, I can use this gray for the wheels at least. And we'll use use some pencil to finish it out as well. What was my full-time job before? I was working at a smart home company. So things like lights and door locks and thermostats. Um, I was doing strategic user experience design when I left, which was super fun, um, but kind of decided I just needed to be on my own. I was in an office for five years and I'm really not like I'm realizing now I'm just not an office person. So trying to make a go of this and see how far I can kind of take my skills. You know, I haven't I feel like in my career I've maybe played it safe sometimes and I just want to I wanted to do this and see how it goes. So I really like I know I say this a lot that I appreciate you guys watching, but I really do. Um, it's uh it's pretty amazing that you're here on a wednesday evening when you could be you know watching netflix or something so <laughs> although for me this is more fun than watching netflix so definitely appreciate it all right i'm just gonna feather out this basic gray Get some more contrast on the far side here. A little bit of the glass. And I did want this portion to be gray, just this little portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade that in, leave a little white. I've also ran my des own design studio. I um, have pretty much always consulted as well. So that's, that's something I've done um, through my career. I do public speaking, I travel and teach. I do a lot of stuff, I build furniture, for example. A lot of people don't know that because I don't really publicize it, but I've done you know, furniture design and build projects for people, custom furniture. Um, it's like my meditation. It helps me relax and just be chill. So a little pencil over this marker and if you have a good marker paper with some decent texture it's a really nice effect and you guys aren't here so you can't see it but for those who have purchased my pieces in the past you will notice there is a nice lovely texture to this paper all right jordan null says i'd love to see you break out into the concept art world oh thank you um, one of my classmates from college actually he he did that. He now works in the movie industry. Super talented dude. Um, his name is Andres Parada. And we were always competing in school. And he just has an insane work ethic. I don't have any other way to put it. Um, but super talented guy. Very regimented, disciplined in his approach to his work. And it's paid off for him. Um, so now he works on, I don't know if you guys know the show, American Horror Story. And I believe it's 911 Lone Star. He does a bunch of concept designs um, for those. But if you don't know, the concept art world and TV production worlds are insanely difficult to break into. And he has 
push through that barrier and he's doing it which is freaking awesome so i'm just working on some tire tread here it's very subtle you may not even be able to see it just a couple little marks on these tires like i said something maybe a bit more futuristic <laughs> not real this is a fake car henry is asking did i go to a design college or did I teach myself? I went to a college that had a design program. I wouldn't say it was a design college per se, but I went to Brigham Young University in Utah. That's where I live. Um, just cause I got family here and it's a nice place. Although we had an earthquake last week, which kind of freaked me out. So now I'm like, maybe I should move. Um, but yeah, I went to Brigham Young University. And, but even then, like, you don't learn everything in school. <laughs> That's not to say I went to this college and, like, I had everything I needed. I had a decent start, for sure. Um, it was a good program. It was affordable. Um, but uh, learned a lot after college and just from working. Working after you get your degree is almost like getting your master's degree. <laughs> If you stay in your field, in design, that kind of thing. All right. Let's see if the Discord has posted anything. Just checking in with you guys. Jordan checked in. Uh, let's see. General. Yeah. So go ahead and join that if you guys want to. Um, have I been on the front camera the whole time? No. Now I am. <laughs> so just taking a little break here. And uh, feel free to ask ask any questions it could be about life like anything um, I try to be more or less an open book because again I didn't really have access to professional designers or artists as a student I'm already getting a little bit messy on this drawing but and you guys can't see too much of it there's like a red spot here um, I wouldn't be able to fix this one necessarily. That's what I was saying, or this spot. Um, that's what I was saying with my drawings that I do for clients. I wear gloves and stuff and like really just try and be care really, really, really careful as I'm drawing. But I'll think of something creative for that dot in the front. See if I can fix it. Let's go ahead and work on the outline here. Ah! <laughs> That happens from time to time with your pencils, but don't worry. It's all good. Can I draw an outhouse? Ask Sam. <laughs> I'm curious about your request for an outhouse. Like, what's that about? Sometimes I wonder if you guys are having me do your homework. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. I think I'm going to do some sort of intake. Let's see. How would this look? Maybe I'll just swoop it back like this. But some sort of detail in the front. Maybe. I'm just gonna leave it there for now and then we'll see see how I feel in a little minute. Um, for the front, I was thinking I could make the whole thing here dark. Uh, maybe line up with this line or something, but um, not sure how I'm feeling about that just yet. All right, so just this edge, I'm gonna shade it in a little bit with pencil. And the reason for that is even on that little highlighted edge, you're gonna get a little bit of a shadow core effect happening on that edge. So basic gray three here, just to punch the contrast. I'll blend this in as well. But you definitely want some nice contrast whenever you have a sketch. Don't be afraid of contrast. And don't be afraid of making things a little bit darker if you need to, to show depth and that something is receding. Okay, don't be, don't be afraid of doing that. I'm cheating a little bit here using a gray marker on top of a colored marker. I don't typically do that just because I don't want the color to necessarily wash out. But in this case, I don't really have a wide enough range of reds. And so I'm just gonna use the gray marker right now to kind of help with help with that range of color, if you will. All right, crimson in here. 
and then I'll probably finish that off with some pencil. Now, I don't have the paint marker I love, but I do have a white. Ooh. I do have a white pencil I can use. Have I done architectural sketching? Yes. If you have been on the stream at any point in the last few months, I do do that. I said do do. I do architectural sketching. So if you subscribe and turn on those alerts, you will not, well, hopefully won't miss um, all the stuff I am doing. And that way, that way you can join in, be a part of all this good stuff, and even help give me suggestions. Like I said, I love suggestions. Sometimes the ideas you guys come up with are just so creative. I think one of my early streams, I did like a toilet monster or something like that. Um, sometimes I'll re-sketch something that you guys have submitted, so that's also a possibility. Um, I'm just throwing a shadow on this from this light, but it's also a possibility. Something I might do is, you know, take a sketch that you guys have done and redo it in the in my style, so to speak. So, all right, let me get this shadow on. Just make sure the directions. Let's see, actually, that is not correct, but that's all right. We'll make it work. Let's see. Mm, shadow, if that's being cast, I'm going to have a point out here. And then it'll be connected. So I'll just darken this area here. And that'll kind of function as my shadow. And I can touch it up with some pencil as necessary. But yeah, Outhouse is an interesting request. Never, never had that one before. Super high-tech living room. I could do that at some point. Uh, let's see, enlarge the dot into a logo. Oh, there's a good idea. Um, I don't know what logo though. <laughs> or maybe it's just some racing number or something. Like it could just be a large element on the front. You know, maybe it's a number and some other graphics or something on this thing. Let's see, what number could I use? I could do like a number eight, would cover up the dot. So I think that's what I'll do, number eight. That was a great idea, great suggestion, thank you. I don't know why I'm picking a number eight, I just wanna pick number eight. <laughs> so I don't have any specific reason for that. And in fact, I will make it red and I think the reason red will work here is it'll just kind of pull everything together on the front of this so I'll have red in the front gray in the back that kind of thing happening but yes great idea thank you for the suggestion So like I said, I do these commissions and sometimes people ask me to do stuff and then I tell them the price and then they go, what? <laughs> the reason is it, it takes so much time. Like I wouldn't, like this, this is probably a fourth of the time I would take on one of these. Um, in fact, this one's a little bit off. I can tell I have to move the eight over a little bit. So I'm gonna modify this, make the eight a little bit wider. So it feels more like it's actually at the halfway point. But these drawings just take so much time when I do something a little bit tighter. And sometimes people don't understand that, so. Two little air ducts gill vents. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, where would I put those? Maybe I'll put them on the front here. I have this line that I had as kind of a guide. So I could do some sort of vent here, especially if it lines up with this other 
you know, detail. Let's bring this over. All right, maybe something like that. Spotify. Oh, what's up, Marcel? Um, this is, it's like a copyright free playlist on Spotify. I can, I'll post the link here in the channel. Um, if you give me just a sec. Share, copy link. And with the magic of iOS, I will now paste it on my laptop. Boom. There you go, Marcel. That's just for you. Much love. Thanks for joining. How is Michigan treating you? Are you guys on lockdown as well? Working from home, remote? Hopefully. I mean, seems like the smart and prudent thing to do these days. All right, a little bit of red on this side as well. Thank you for the idea on the air ducts. Um, that was from Zinc. Appreciate it. That worked out pretty well. A little bit of gray in there. As always, I will post this sketch in the Google Drive for the live stream. So be sure to check that out. If this is your first time, you can find that in the video description. Definitely subscribe and turn on alerts or you will miss these consistently. Um, so yeah, you'll want to turn those on for sure. What's up, Rodrigo? Como estas? Sorry, I'm not going to pretend to speak uh, decent Spanish. I speak a little bit, but um, it's been a minute, so... How's Mexico treating you? I believe that's where you're based. Rodrigo is a longtime fan. He's been following me for a few years now, so glad to have you here, bro. Make sure you turn on them alerts and subscribe. Like, he's been a fan long enough that he learned how to draw, and now he's doing workshops. So, <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this for a minute. I've never actually done a full rendering with chart markers, so this is interesting for me anyways. Um, definitely reminding me of a few things. For sure. Do I have a sketch a day playlist? I do not. Um, you know, maybe when I feel like I have a handle on the YouTube thing, I will start doing the playlist. I have like all these little gardens to tend, so to speak. So I have, you know, I have my Facebook page and then I've got a Twitter, I've got Instagram and there's different audiences across them all. Now I have this Discord thing. I've got Patreon that's kicked off. So I don't know, I don't know if I can handle another thing here, but maybe one of you would wanna um, sign up and, and help do that. I'd be happy to give you a different, or happy to, happy to give you uh, suggestions as to what to add to that playlist. But you know, I'd be down if, if one of you wanted to put that together and maintain it and I could promote it. Totally down for that, so shoot me an email if you're interested. All right, a little bit of pencil in the back here, just to kind of help with some contrast things going on. And clarifications, like if this is really part of, you know, some sort of engine thing, I want to make sure we communicate that. Just in the back, like so. 
Yeah, it's kind of crazy, huh? Just I was saying at the beginning of the stream just how much has changed and how quickly. Um, but I think I think we'll all make it through this eventually, and uh, you know, figure out figure out the new normal. You know what that is. So I'm just using a white pen here. It's a Pitt Artist Pen. It has a bullet tip, and I just wanted to put a white outline on this number eight. I didn't want to break out my gouache inks, or gouache paint rather. Um, maybe I should have, but again, that's something I typically do if I'm working on a more finished drawing for a client. I'll actually break out paints and stuff too. All right, now just a little bit of black ink around this number eight. And I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Thanks for hanging with me this whole time if you guys are, um, if you've been here from the beginning. Appreciate it. If you haven't been here at the beginning, shame on you. Just kidding. I appreciate you being here anyways. Um, just be sure to, like I said, turn on alerts and subscribe so you don't miss stuff. <laughs> We get a lot of people saying, oh, I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, people on other channels, you know, like uh, Twitter or Instagram. Stuff like that. Or even Facebook. Some people don't even know. It's all the algorithms, man. It's really hard to... There's so many people producing content, it's just really hard to break through and uh, kind of create some signal in all the noise. Now that this white's dried, I can hit it again and get the opacity I'm after with the white. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't quite work out that way. That's why I like the gouache paint. Just reclaim this edge on the side with a little bit of pencil. Shadow. Work light till you get it right, always. It'll save you a lot of trouble, heartache later on. Also, pro tip, if you wanna get good at drawing, you need to sketch on pen and on, on paper, okay? And if you want to get really good at drawing, sketch with a pen. Okay, it's gonna force you to. It's gonna force you to learn to work with your mistakes. It's gonna force you to be more thoughtful, to be adaptable. All desirable qualities. So, if you're hoping to be good, like, and I'm not saying like me, because I still have a lot to learn. But you know, a lot of these designers, artists. Um, that's kind of how they trained or learned to draw is you draw with Draw with a pen and uh, Learn to work with your mistakes as you go and Definitely experiment too, so don't just go by what I say Because um, I don't know everything and my way is not necessarily the best way But definitely um, be open to trying new things. Just observe everything around you and uh, you know, see how that works out for you. Just always be willing to learn and adapt and pick stuff up. Alex says, no worries, man. It's really cool to look at your drawing and we learn so much things. Oh, thank you. All right, so there's probably more I could do here. Um, even just looking at this, I'm like, eh, I wanna fix this or that. But really, at some point, you just gotta call it good. And I'm kinda to that point where I'll call it good on this one. Um, so for the next 30 seconds or so, 
drop suggestions in the channel let's pick something let's go with it if you did suggest something earlier just drop it again so I don't have to scroll up and see what it was and then I'll go ahead and transition to doing something else I think Friday I'm gonna do some digital stuff if you want to see something on Friday that I didn't cover today you let me know and I'll try and incorporate that. I think my sharpener is dying. I've had this sharpener for about, how many years now? For about seven years, almost. It's the age of one of my children. And uh, I, I think it's dying, so I may have to get a new sharpener soon. Happy Wednesday, welcome, thanks for hanging out. I always say I'm gonna go for an hour and then I end up going for two. So appreciate you hanging out this long if you have. Uh, if you skip ahead in the stream, that's fine too. When you do rewatch it, it's all good. Not everyone has two hours to like sit and watch some Jamaican draw stuff, right? Oh, I like. I really like this music. Um, Okay, Jordan wants to see planes. We'll do, I think we'll do a plane or an inhaler, or maybe both. Um, I could do the inhalers really quick. Those are easy. So, no worries there. All right, I'm looking for a black marker and I can't, my brain is just, brain is giving out on me here. I guess I could just use a Sharpie. So here's this fatty super Sharpie. Has a nice, thin tip, but I can also go thick with it. black here on our wheel wells shadows and so forth just remember with drawings there's always something to improve always something to make better if you've gotten to the point where there's nothing to improve <laughs> you've either stopped learning or you've transcended this existence um, because nobody's perfect even well I shouldn't say even but most of my drawings are not ever where I really want them to be so don't be too hard on yourselves practice makes better practice makes perfect whatever the saying is just keep practicing So let's do some quick inhalers. Why do you want me to do an inhaler, Andres? I'm curious. Is this like your school assignment? Or you just really like inhalers? You're just like into it. I'm curious. All right, I'm gonna sign this, and I will say, if there's ever a time you want to purchase a sketch from the stream, you can hit me up. I know Jordan has before. So, um, yeah, let me know. <laughs> but definitely had fun with this one. This is just, like I said, something I had been thinking of, and I just wanted to sketch something along these lines, you know? Maybe there's some text on this little lever control same thing here maybe there's a little text add some effects scratches whatever whatever we got to do scribbles on the wheels lighten things up if 
you're doing pencil on your marker, you want to make sure it is the last thing or next to last thing that you do. Because marker does not go over pencil very well, but pencil over marker looks amazing. <laughs> All right, Jordan says he's saving up for another one. <laughs> appreciate it, Jordan. Um, I really do appreciate the support. But being here is enough, so thank you. All right, if you like the stream, definitely give it a like and a follow. I see some of you have done that. Um, share it with your friends. Get the word out. I'm trying to, like I said, make a go at this and I really do appreciate you being here I appreciate your help I appreciate everything you guys do and are and so many of you have sent me notes personally thanking me for this and it really does mean a lot so I appreciate you and I appreciate it sorry I was just adding a little highlight here on this subtle crease Contrast is really what makes things seem three-dimensional. So if you're ever struggling and you wonder why your sketches look flat, a lot of times it's putting the contrast in the right space, right places so you get that read that you're after. And a good example of this is no matter where you're sitting, if it's in a room or outside, look at where two surfaces meet and change direction. Okay, so something like this edge going in this direction and then going down and you'll notice that there's a contrast difference between those two areas and that's what I'm talking about so pay attention to that keep your eyes open and you'll be able to really introduce some good depth into your sketches and get what you're after okay so little little pro tip there from from me to you So these white sections, I'm just trying to enhance a little bit some of the highlight spots that I left, right? And when you do the marker over the highlight and then run the pen, it kind of gives it a little bit of a blend, so to speak. So it's something you can try to do. If you're doing something like this. All right, let's call it good for this guy. So we'll do a quick airplane sketch and a quick and some quick. Uh... I'm always nervous to remove these because sometimes they tear. But again, if any of you are interested in this drawing, I'm happy to part ways with it. But uh, shoot me a message. We'll we'll chat. All right, so I'm going to switch papers to my smaller marker paper and tracing paper here. I'll do the inhaler on some tracing paper and I'll just do one inhaler and maybe show you two different approaches. So one approach, kind of sketch the overall form, block it out first. My son uses an inhaler, so I'm trying to remember what it kind of looks like here. So I don't use it very often, but something like this. Start with your form. It might be a cylinder as well. And then maybe that cylinder trans, uh, transitions into something like a square. But you can use this as your base form. And then from this, go ahead and start dividing. So adding, in this case, maybe it's a bit of thickness to show that this is a button. You know, if there's a central axis, it might be shaping the mouthpiece here a bit. Contrast is your friend. It will help you pull form out of your drawings where there is no form. Okay, maybe something like that. And I'm just going to put a part in because I like part lines that interrupt forms. It's a thing. It's a thing I like to do. A little background. Background like so. Um, actually, maybe this is just a cap. So if it's a cap, you know, we need a part line in there. And then on this one, we can kind of do the same thing. 
Maybe just transition this mouthpiece down a bit. Maybe it's a little skinnier. Uh, maybe this design actually... You know, my kid is always loosing his inhaler. Because, you know, they have a million things on their minds. They're not always paying attention. Um, I'm not going to do a presentation sketch of the inhaler for you, but this is kind of how I would approach the process. Um, this would need to have kind of a round canister thing. I'm just going to fudge it because it's not a square. But as far as an ideation sketch goes, you can kind of start light until you get it right and then work on your transitions, overall form, and so forth. Again, maybe we have a cap here that comes off. And that's something you want to show. Then you can have an arrow and then maybe even sketch the cap coming off as well. So just real quick, easy sketch. Like these are acceptable sketches for um, for presentation and just for explaining concepts. There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't have to be completely flashy. Just make sure that it feels confident, right? So even though this is like loose and sketchy, whatever, trying to approach it confidently and just put those lines down. I do like tracing paper because I can use both sides of it as I'm doing as I'm kind of working here. Um, made a mistake. Let's see if can I fix that. Yeah, I think I can fix it. All right. So maybe this portion's green. Kind of blend that up on the sides. Maybe a middle line there. Now flip over. Take the same green, and now I have two values with the same marker. And I'll probably add a third value here on the side as well. And then on the top portion, let's say I want this to just be a matte gray. Oops, it's not dark enough. If I want this to be a matte gray, just kind of flood the area. Like so. And let's go with this cool gray three. Just kind of hit the far side and blend in. Actually, I'm gonna go back to the seven and just hit that. Contrast, right? Contrast is our friend. Just be careful. <laughs> so just a little bit like that. Let me move these so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And I probably should zoom in because I'm using smaller paper now. There we go. A little bit of pencil. I'm not going to do this one just for the sake of time. So we've been we've been at this for almost two hours now. But a little bit of pencil goes a long way with with these types of sketches. Just pencil on the side, just like that. Okay. And on the outside here, go back to my super sharpie. On the far side, give it some nice line weight, like so, and maybe fill in the shadow. So something that's scary that a lot of people don't do, but try and hold your pen further up the barrel and see what that does for you. Um, I like it because it allows me to see more of the drawing as I'm working. And it kind of reduces the likelihood that I'll have a mistake. Um, that's just something I've noticed for me personally. But there's an example of a simple inhaler sketch. All right, cool, let's do a quick airplane. Now, I'm not an aeronautical designer. I don't do airplanes every day, that's my disclaimer here. But I do know that an airplane has kind of a um, general cylindrical tube shape, and depending on the plane or craft you're sketching, that's gonna be your thing. Now, I can sketch this airplane if I if this is the nose of the plane, that means I'm going to see a little bit of the underneath. If this is the nose of the plane, then I'm going to see more of the top. So let's go ahead and start by just sketching an ellipse here and continuing with just an overall cylindrical form. And 
in the middle of the plane, sometimes you have kind of a belly. So I'll modify this cylinder by now adding this transition point. And we also have some sort of cabin. So there's a bunch of ellipses here at play, like so. And we have a nose on this thing. Okay, and we're gonna have wings. So the cabin itself, maybe we have something like this going on. Okay, again, just building up the form. And this is, this is just from previous drawings that I've done. Um, like I said, I'm not an aeronautical engineer or whatever. And then the wings, you can decide, you know, what's the propulsion system on the plane? Um, is this more of a propeller design? And if it is, then I may end up with a front that looks something more like this, for example. And are the wings you know, above, is it a, is it a biplane, for example? So I may have something like this. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit interesting because we have this main axis through the plane, but we also have wings above and below. So think about where your eye level is. If this line is going like so, how many lines would it take to get to my eye level? So my eye level is probably somewhere here. Okay, and if my eye level is here, now when I'm above, my vanishing point, which is off to that side, and my vanishing point, which is off to this side, okay, I need to consider if this is in a box or cube, how would the top of the box or cube look, and where is the limit of that? So I'm going to decide the limit of the box is the end of this wing. So something like that. And now I would just go to the top of this line and then draw toward that vanishing point. Okay. the top of the wing in that regard. Now my paper is a little bit small. We could overlay this on our giant paper. Let's get rid of that, that guy. So back to my giant paper because I ran out of space here. Zoom out. So at this point, just start drawing some ellipses just to kind of mark some points here. And this wing's a little bit close, so I'm gonna move this guy down. Um, this one I'll kind of keep. And then the shape of the wing, I wanna kind of have be a bit, bit rounded. So then I'll carry that over. Let's round this one. Carry that down like so. And the overall cross section of the wing is gonna have some thickness as well. So as I introduce elements, maybe it's a painted portion or some sort of flap, for example, I would try and make sure that I'm communicating that the wing, the cross section of the wing, you know, is something that would provide lift on this conceptual aircraft. And I say conceptual because it's really not based on any real aircraft here. I'm just kind of going with the flow. All right, and just making something up. So generally cylindrical form, and then I'll have these supports for the wing on this kind of biplane design. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for hanging out with me for so long. This has been amazing and fun, and we're gonna wrap things up. But as always, I will be back on Wednesday, or sorry, <laughs> Friday. I am running low on brain sugar right now but I'll be back on Friday with another live stream for you little monsters and I'm not sure what I'm gonna be doing yet but maybe I'll have a stroke of inspiration again and I'll come up with something but in the meantime if you want to drop suggestions feel free to do so on the discord it's probably the best place right now just because we're trying to build a community there and create some interest and have you guys frankly help each other because I can't answer every question I get um, and I feel I can I can already see a little bit of community starting which makes me happy so definitely hit up the discord check it out and help each other out man it's all good okay just a little, little line there just to Mark my place. 
come back over. Let me zoom in some more. Okay. Is that better? I'm just worried that I'll um, obscure something for you, so I wanted to make sure I was far enough away from all this. Um, and then as far as wheels go, you know, we could figure that out, but um, geometrically speaking, this is probably not totally accurate, and that's okay. In this case, I'm kind of going from memory and um, that's not always the best thing. So you may have noticed when I do YouTube videos or live, sometimes I am like, hey, let me take a quick look. And that's just to make sure things are in the right place. I did not take a look with this airplane sketch. So if it seems off or weird, that's why I didn't, uh, didn't really take a look. But this is how I would approach drawing something like this. So that much, that much remains consistent. All right, just a couple propeller lines there. Let's remove the underlay. You can kind of see what's happening. And depending on the type of the plane, you might end up with, you know, sections, segments. So you could start to add those in. Maybe some rivets, riveting. Um, if this is, you know, a war plane, <laughs> we could have a nice little eyeball. Something like that on it. And some teeth. Remember when like military planes were like super cool? I don't think they really do this nowadays though. But yeah, you could do something like that. I have no idea what I would do for the wing for the wheels. That's why I'm like hesitating a bit. I think these need to come forward or back because um, if I were to do wheels they'd have to be like kind of here and here and out which is kind of weird maybe there's another wheel there but um, in any case needless to say that's kind of how I would approach drawing a plane of some sort what's up Nick um, we're at the tail end of the stream thanks for joining but I'm gonna be wrapping up you can catch the stream live i'm thinking about wednesdays at this time tuesday or wednesdays at this time um and fridays at 9 a.m and then sundays around midday at least midday my time um and that gives a little bit of flexibility as to when people can join so that's kind of why i'm spreading it out if you miss one you can catch the other um, but i do upload the streams to facebook and this one is automatically uploaded to youtube so you can check them out there um, and watch them. But definitely subscribe and turn on alerts if you don't want to miss the live chat and interaction that we have. Thank you so much to you guys who have joined and commented and given suggestions. We had a fantastic time, at least I did, and I hope you guys did as well. Thank you so much. Much love and appreciation to you and yours. And please, please stay away from people. <laughs> let's let's uh let's take this social distancing thing seriously and get over this time period because I can't stay in my house forever you know I'm gonna lose my mind I don't know about you guys but yes definitely subscribe turn on those alerts I pretty much say it in every video but I don't think anyone really does it. But you will want to do it so you don't miss out on these fun times that we have together on the live stream Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. 
All right, so yeah, something like that for a plane is what I would do. But again, I think the wing's in the wrong position, so whatever. Um, it's all good. French is vendredi. Vendredi? I'm saying that probably like an Italian, Spanish, or I don't know, Spanish, Italian person or whatever. All right, just to recap, there's our under sketch for the plane. We did some quick inhalers. Um, and this was for, I forgot who. Oh, this was for Andres. So yeah, quick requests for Andres, did that. Appreciate all your contributions and support. If you feel like doing that, the links are at the top of the frame for Venmo and PayPal. And this sketch is available after the stream if you would like to purchase it. This was our kind of supercar, hypercar, Batmobile thing that we did. Um, I'm actually doing one digitally as well, but I'm doing, a, I'm doing an F1 car digitally and I haven't finished it, so Maybe that's a bit of a bit of where this all came from, um, but I am working on a, a fun sketch just for myself. I may upload a time lapse at some point. So, yeah, thanks for joining, guys. It's been fun. Hope you have a wonderful Wednesday. I certainly will. Cheers, and we'll see you next time on Sketch Day. Thank you. Love you guys. Take care. <laughs>